So, and, and if we acknowledge the degree of severity to which the planet has changed um, in times past, we can certainly recognize that, well, if, if the planet changed as much in the next 10,000 years or 15,000 or 20,000 years as it did in the last 10 or 20,000 years, what would remain to tell future generations about our presence here? There wouldn't be nothing here. There wouldn't be anything here except for, you know, things like the Great Pyramid, which of course we look at the Great Pyramid and nobody's got a clue. They can come up with all the explanations they want, nobody's really got a clue. Welcome to Uncharted X. My name is Ben. I've got a video today about some of the engineering that has gone into the Giza Plateau in Egypt. This is a conversation that was recorded as part of a three hour interview that we did in Giza with two of the best guides that you could hope to ever get. Uh, two friends of mine, Yusuf Ayawan, who is the son of Abdel Hakim Ayawan, very famous indigenous wisdom keeper that has lived his whole life on Giza and Yusuf still lives there today. In addition to studying Egypt his whole life, Yusuf is also a very accomplished and practicing stonemason and also Muhammad Ibrahim, who is a trained Egyptologist. Both these guys are fluent in hieroglyphs. They know an awful lot, and I hope you enjoy it. It's a relatively short clip. I will drop in and out and offer some commentary here and there. Drop me a like and subscribe and leave your comments below. Uh, building the Great Pyramid has m more mysteries than anything else from the beginning to the location, to the use of it, or the reuse of it. Everything, every challenge, almost every challenge in the pyramid structure is a mystery. So, yeah. even officials will, will never uh, tell you that he has a theory about building the Great Pyramid and he's 100% positive right. about mm -hmm. it. Hmm? Because we have uh, hundreds of books about the Great Pyramid. Yeah. Not not about the civilization itself, but the Great Pyramid. And we studied so many theories how they built the pyramid. And in the end of each theory, we say, but that is not possible according to logic. Right. Uh, especially the theories of building rams, straight rams, or, or round, uh, rams. round rams. Uh, in, in each, uh, when we reach the level of having blocks weighing more than 70 tons, the theory of the ramps will not fit. But it fit if we have only the blocks 1.5 tons, 2 tons, 3 tons, but then we will uh, face the blocks in the, uh, the so-called king chamber 70 tons and more. So one of our uh, famous uh, doctors, he was, uh, he was a physician, but interested in mythologies and uh, yeah. supernatural things. And he used to give like a, a TV program every week called uh, Dr. Mustafa. And he actually talked about the Great Pyramid. And he said the only way to push or drag the, the 70 tons block up to that level, we need a very solid concrete ramp. It was a very, very long uh, measurement and to have the smooth angle and to so we can drag or push that. Uh, block smoothly to that level. So on rollers from yes. steel. For, for steel. From steel. Yes. yes. Yeah. To, to handle the weight. But a ram road from mm. mud brake and wood, yeah. that's going to sink. Never happen. Yes. Yes. But the slide shape can take, but let's put in mind, 70 tons on this level, mm. then when you change the angle going high from straight, mm. it's not going to be much more than 70 mm. tons. Yeah. 
Uh, we have lots and lots and lots to say about uh, that subject. But he also suggested another thing, mm -hmm. anti-gravity. Mm -hmm. He also talked about anti-gravity. My father also talked about it. I think this goes back to what Randall Carlson was saying at the start of this video, in that we really don't have a clue when it comes to the Great Pyramid. And I think you can apply that to all of Giza, if not the entire pyramid belt in Egypt. Every explanation for how the pyramids were built or what they were used for can be debunked, more or less. I think Chris Dunn's work comes the closest to really understanding it, but even that excellent work that he did is still an example of how we project our current technological understanding and our own perspective of these times onto an object. You know, it really sits outside of that perspective. Even though we continue to advance our own understanding of the universe at a fairly rapid rate, I still think the pyramids, the Giza Plateau, the pyramid belt, and what their actual function was the solution to that mystery really lies outside of our perspective, at least yet. Well, if, if we look at these, uh, just these elements, how many different types of stones? How perfect the line? How big the structure is? What's the weight of the stones? What's the amount of work in the bedrock? Hmm? We're not talking about any function. We're just looking at how it was built. Right. So first you need to uh, study this project. You're not gonna just, okay, I'm gonna build a pyramid. I'm, I need you know, yes, yes I, I'm just gonna keep building, but all oh, the angle is like they say about the bent pyramid. It's not mm. accurate. Yeah, but let's focus now maybe on the Great Pyramid and mm -hmm. leave the bent pyramid for later. So you have work in the bedrock that needs to be accomplished. Huge amount of work, not just in the pyramid, but in the pyramid complex. You have like the, the middle uh, middle king, uh, middle pyramid here in the Giza Plateau, the one uh, labeled as Khafra. Mm -hmm. And you can see, uh, for example, um, the wall that surrounds it is mm -hmm. all from the bedrock itself. So eight meters of rock were lowered all around the pyramid. You can find, I'm not going to talk even about the pyramid structure, but what surrounds mm -hmm. <laughs> You can find in the bedrock three-dimensional figures made to house what we, if we can call it the tiles. But they are also shaped in a puzzle shape to interlock with each other. And we have seen, of course, many, all those who have seen like how sharp this is, that you cannot, in many cases, fit a razor blade in the... So right. this level, even before they start building the pyramid itself, yeah. they still didn't talk about cutting the stone and start yeah. building the pyramid. That shaping the base, it's a challenge, especially in the second pyramid. As Yusuf said, they had from the uh, the back side of the pyramid, which is the west side, they had to cut eight meters down and to take the stones and put it on the east side to make it higher level, to balance the, yeah. the, 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 the ground and make it horizontal level because it was like a sloping angle, the, the original shape. So they had to lower part and higher part to make it horizontal level. Mm. Okay. These other slabs Muhammad is talking about, some of them at least weighs hundred tons or more. So Oof. we're not just talking seventy tons in the grid in the pyramid mm -hmm. structures. Maybe a seventy tons or sixty between sixty and seventy tons are the granite pieces in the so-called mm -hmm. king's chamber yeah. mm -hmm. in the great pyramid. Mm -hmm. Uh, but the other ones in the foundation of the middle pyramid, you can, you can easily think it's the bedrock. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but you can see the, uh, they are like more than one meter high. Yeah. And they mm -hmm. are like, uh, some of them is like, I wouldn't, at least three meters something. Four by four and five by five. five and eight three by, by eight. five. Yes. Four by and five uh -huh. yeah. in front of the. And then they had another layer of the other style as if they, they built part of the mound. But why not move with it back where you have enough stone foundation and instead of building the rest? And this way we will never, uh, we will never stop having question marks. So not just to have to, to look for, for an answer. Huh? Like you can look at the challenges and what is the, what are they thinking? I want to highlight the couple of features 
that Yusuf and Muhammad are talking about here as they relate to the second pyramid. And in fact, it, it's kind of as they relate to all of those pyramids and the plateau itself. So many people come to Giza and they look up at the pyramids, but you will be as equally astonished if you just look down and look at what you're walking on because the actual plateau itself has been engineered. And in the case of the second pyramid, it's been built on a slope. And in fact, you can see on the southwestern corner right here that that whole chunk, the first several courses of the pyramid itself are actually bedrock. They've shaped the bedrock itself into the pyramid concourse or the courses. And as the ground has sloped away, they've taken that quarried rock in the form of just massive tiles of limestone and put them down into the ground as actual tiles. So just to be clear, the second pyramid actually sits inside an enclosure, kind of like the Sphinx does. There's actually a wall that runs around it on that southwestern end that's in places up to eight meters high. So the actual bedrock around the pyramid itself has been lowered down eight meters into the ground. And then some of the bedrocks come back up to form the bottom parts of the pyramid. But it's from this hollowed out area around the base of the pyramid. That's where they originally quarried these tiles from. And you can see these tiles in the ground as you walk around the pyramids and around much of the Giza Plateau itself. As Yusuf said, you can't fit a razor blade between the gaps in them. They've been fitted so precisely and made so perfectly. Also, they match the bedrock underneath it. So that's like a three-dimensional interlocking face that has been made perfectly that they've found when they have pulled some of these tiles up. It's incredible, the engineering that's gone into it. And some of these tiles are monstrous. They're eight meters by eight meters by one meter. I mean, talk about, uh, as Yusuf said, they're possibly 100 tons and more. And this is the case also for the Great Pyramid. Uh, in fact, the Giza Plateau itself in some places runs very, very deep. The Osiris Shaft that was recently opened to the public, 2017, goes down approximately 100 feet, you know, 30 plus meters into the ground. I know that in front of the Sphinx Temple, the Valley Temple, they've previously excavated a boat and they they actually reburied it right there because they find these things everywhere and turns out in the ground is one of the better climate controlled places for it. and if it's not that important they reburied it but they also sank a shaft in front of that and i believe that shaft went down 100 plus feet and they found granite blocks down there so you know granite's not what that hillside is made of it's all a limestone outcropping so finding granite blocks at 100 feet means that that was put there at some point but the second pyramid itself is really astonishing. The work that's gone into the ground around it, it will blow your mind. It's an achievement to have built the pyramid in the first place, but to then also ramp up the difficulty by actually building it into a slope like this is just, it's a bit mind boggling really. Like I said, the real reason for this is very much likely out of our perspective and understanding currently. I mean, I'm sure we'll keep guessing at it, but there's really no good explanation for why this was done or what it was done for because for damn sure it wasn't a tomb. The other thing like when they talk about how it was built on, on, on different phases, first it was this and then what, this was supposed to be the barrier chamber but then no, the king or the Changing engineer changed his mind and all these explanations. Where is your solid evidence about this? Is there? Because who can change a design of such work? From day one, when they start building, they, the design was ready and every detail was ready because they are dealing with massive blocks. They cannot, uh, it's not just a small break. They can destroy some and rebuild the other. Mm. Yeah. Exactly. And by the way, uh, back to the second pyramid again, there is a piece in uh, the, the so-called mortuary temple. We measured that piece 14 mm. meters long and about two meters high and one and a half or two meters uh, wide or yeah, thick. Wide. Okay? Yeah, yeah. And the, 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 the strange thing that this piece will not be seen. It yeah. is between a layer between two granite blocks. Yeah. Okay, so if that, that is an cases. inner part from the wall. So why they, they brought that piece? Is it easier to move with a bigger block? I don't think 14 so. 14 meters. <laughs> Some people think that. Mm -hmm. I heard it once, I, I don't know who can believe something like this. It's, it's easier just to move with one block. What do you mean it's easier to move? Mm -hmm. Why we don't do this, do this today? Mm -hmm. because we Why we don't move with the 14 meters blocks? Because it's easier. Because yeah. it's not easier, of course. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Everybody will look at that. And if you want to build a temple, just that so-called 
casing stone from granite was enough to build a fancy temple. But that wall that can be more than five meter wide for a mummification temple made from different types of stones, hmm? granite, white calcite, uh, quartzite, basalt. basalt. That gives me a question. So at these megalithic sites, the ones that typically display the most massive architecture, one of the things they have in common are the different types or the same types of often very hard stones. Maybe you could talk a little bit about the types of stone that you find at these sites and maybe what you think their purpose was. That's another challenge. Some of the things like the basalt. Yeah, I just wanted to say something. If we're going to look and at, a, a if we're going to think that a primitive civilization will do something like this, then it was not supposed to be. There is no pyramids out there <laughs> because it cannot be done. Hmm? So to think copper chisels and things like that, that's definitely, uh, here is, it's, a, it's a complicated point, but we cannot ignore it. What, before I would go, before I have a quarry system to bring different types of stone, Cortezite, white calcite, uh, basalt, granite stone, different types. And each type required certain group of people, yeah. certain tools, limestone, okay. certain treatment, yeah. because we are not talking about just cutting, cutting and shaping. And shaping. Yes, and shaping. And, shaping. <laughs> and then raising. Mm -hmm. uh, every part is a challenge. It's not enough to do a challenge, so they built it on top of a, a big man. So, <laughs> put, build it in the valley. Huh? It certainly was a challenge, and it certainly wasn't anything that any primitive civilization could have achieved. I think it's something that is kind of beyond our ability to achieve even today. I hope you enjoyed this brief look at the interview that my friend Luke and I did with Yusuf and Mohammed. I will publish the rest of that interview at some point in the future, but I'll appreciate any feedback in the comments section, and of course, I'd love it if you tick the like button and drop me a subscribe. Peace. Thank you.